We humans are pleasure seekers. Everything we want from life is ultimately trying to find and attain as much pleasure as we can. From the food we eat, to the vacations we take, the buildings we build, the relationships we try to create. Ultimately, we all want to have as much pleasure as possible. I think you can compare these pleasures of which I speak about to flying on a plane. What's the best way to fly? First class. You get to lie back, relax. After that comes second class, but they can't call it that. So they'll call it business class, executive travel, ambassador travel. After that, we get to third class, economy. We feel at least we're saving some money. Then comes cargo. <laughs> there we are with all the animals and the goats and the suitcases. And after that, we get given a rope. The rope is tied around the end of the plane, and we're told to hang on. <laughs> Those different levels of pleasure have been explained to us by a great Jewish mystic. His name was Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. He lived in Italy a few hundred years ago. And he said, ultimately, what we want to do is achieve great pleasure in our lives. And just like those five forms of flying, he gave us five different levels that we can achieve in our lives. Because we don't want to lump all of our pleasures together into one box. We want to spread them out, massage them into different parts of our lives. Let's spend the remaining time we have together going through these five levels, and hopefully we'll get some gratitude and beautiful truth out of them. The lowest level, he says, is physical pleasure. Now, we spend our lives also achieving a lot of physical pleasure. Is that a good thing? So according to the Ramchal, as he's known, Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzato, it's a great thing. Ultimately, when it comes to all physical pleasures, the question we should ask ourselves are when, where, how, and with who? And once we answer that quest, those questions correctly, we can enjoy all the physical pleasure of this world. I and my family, we love pizza. Pizza's fantastic. You can melt cheese on anything, it's going to taste great. <laughs> what makes pizza so good? Why do my kids get so excited when we bring home a big pie of pizza? And really, this question can be rephrased. What makes a pleasure pleasurable? And I want to share with you an incredible answer that can really change the way you look at how you enjoy pleasures of life. You see, all pleasures have one thing in common. No matter what they are, the art you're looking at, the music you listen to, the food you eat, the pizza you're about to enjoy, they all involve harmony. Think about it. The right amount of dough to the right amount of cheese. The sauce has to be just right. Not too much salt, I can't eat it. Too little salt, I can't taste it. It all comes together. What makes the music so good? It's just perfect. The right amount of drum, to the right amount of guitar, to the right vocals, the right bass. When all the tunes harmonize, I get pleasure. Now, my level of music is different to yours. You may like classical, I like hard rock. That's okay. Ultimately, though, when things harmonize, when relationships harmonize in our lives, so too we achieve pleasure. That's what makes the pizza taste so good. That's what makes the music sound so beautiful, that beautiful piece of art and that sunset. It just harmonizes. So really, my friends, we are not pleasure seekers. We are harmony seekers. That is the human condition. And so physical pleasure is part of that. I want to harmonize myself with what I eat, with the people I'm sitting with, with the environment, the restaurant, no matter where I am. If I can achieve harmony in my life, I achieve pleasure. But there's something greater than physical pleasure, and that is love. And that's level four. Love, everyone's singing about it, everyone's looking for it, but what is it in essence? So I'll share with you one Hebrew word if I can. The Hebrew word for love, those who don't know, is ahava. Now you may think that's a cream that we get sold in the malls, but before it was a cream, it was an idea and a concept. And the Kabbalists say that the root of the word ahava is hav, to give. Because when you give somebody something, you love them. Now, that's very different to what most of us were brought up with thinking. Most of us thought that when someone gives us something, we love them, or vice versa. If I give my wife a gift, 
she'll love me. If I give my children gifts, they love me too. Is that true? We know that's not true. We know that a person who gives their children whatever they want, whenever they want, they don't want to go to bed on time, they want to have chocolate for dinner, they don't want to do their homework, no problem, blah, blah, blah. you can stay up till three in the morning playing with your iPad. That's a terrible parent. Why? I gave them everything they wanted. Isn't that a sign of love? That's my sign of love, but that's their sign of taking. And we want to create lovers, and to love is to give. And that's really what the word love is about, at least in Hebrew. Love is about giving, because when I give somebody something, I love them, whether I like it or not. And so part of the human condition, especially with children, is training them to give. Give selflessly. Give of themselves. Now, they can't give money because they don't have too much, but their time, their effort, their energy, their attitude, their personality, ultimately, that's what we're trying to teach our children, and of course ourselves, because as you now know, we're just big children, right? If I were to ask you if you have a, a child, for example, and I were to say, you know what? I'll buy your child from you. I'll give you 100 bucks. Any takers? 200, 1,000, a million? No way. Why not? Because love has no price. And while if I would give you a billion dollars for one of your children, you wouldn't take it, hopefully. You could buy a lot of good fun with level five pleasure physical, and yet, even for one moment of love, you wouldn't give up all of level five. These aren't just levels, these are different universes. Let's move up. What's greater than love? Meaning. There was a famous psychiatrist, a Holocaust survivor. His name was Viktor Frankl. And after he survived the Holocaust, he managed to pull together a lot of his psychiatric training, seeing what he saw in Auschwitz and the other camps. And he became a psychiatrist for uh, universities, and he taught a lot and wrote a vast amount. And he found that people before the war were able to find meaning in life. And after the war, it was difficult to grasp it. And he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And he realized that unless we have meaning, no matter how much love we have in our lives and how much physical pleasure, we're not going to get too far. Why am I alive? Why am I here? What's my purpose of existence? This is what Viktor Frankl wrote in his classic book, Man's Search for Meaning, well worth reading after my book, Do Got Questions? Shameless plug. <laughs> then what's greater than meaning? So he says the second level pleasure is going to be creativity. You see, physical pleasure ultimately is going to be a little bit selfish, right? I'm taking for myself. And love as well. Really, it should be a giving act, but ultimately, I want to achieve love. And when I want meaning in my life, whether I'm joining an organization, helping my, my temple, whatever it is, ultimately, that's for me. But at some point in our lives, and when is a big question, we have to be creative. And we have to create pleasure for others. And that's a higher level. The architect has way more pleasure than the builder. The builder finds meaning in building a big library, for example. But the architect, that's the person who pulls it together. They find meaning and they see things from their plans at a 2D concept to a 3D reality. That level of meaning far outweighs any other pleasure. Because when we can create pleasure for others, no matter how it comes, that level of pleasure is far greater. The greatest moment of life, my wife told me, is creating life. We become creative energies, and that's the way we're created. We were created as beings who can create for others. We can sit on our islands and take all the pleasure for ourselves, but that's not the purpose. Part of life has to be, we have to eat, we have to enjoy, you've got to go on vacation. I understand that, but at some point, how do we give back? How do we create for others? That's the question of Lizzato. So I've achieved my four. I've got physical pleasure, and I've got love, and I'm trying to find meaning. And not only that, I'm trying to create meaning for others. What's greater than that, says Lizzato, spiritual pleasure. Those moments of clarity, we connect to something greater than ourselves. Ultimately, that pulls all the other levels together, and it gives us meaning and love and physical and creation that makes us part of God's amazing universe. Thank you all very, very much. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate it.